Sounds pretty solid. <laughs> that, that sounded all like it could have any hollow wood in there? Hollow spot? Sounded solid to me. Yeah. I see he's got a core there, so I guess yeah. we're going to find out. Yeah. Do you guys do that often? You core it? You know, it, it's a good practice. Um, you know, it, it, and it, it depends on your, how comfortable you are with uh, your assessment of the trees. Be gentle with Mike's core here. Yeah, Mike Oxford take nice a look at your wood. To, uh, share okay. this tool with us. And I'm not going to bust it, but there's two things you can do when you take a core. You can take this core out and wiggle it. Good, sound, strong wood is going to wiggle. If it busts off, okay, maybe we've got a brown rock going. <clears throat> if it just, you know, smashes up, maybe we've got a white rock going. This doesn't look that bad. I don't even see... Any stain that bothers me one bit, I think we lost some here, and that might have been a little bit of punk. But pass that around, and again, be gentle with it. You can even sniff it too, they smell different when they're rotten. <laughs> don't taste it. Hey, that, uh, Mike, Michael, I have, I have a question don't for you. Don't that color. What, what's a good core, um, you know, Brand? to use it, or what's that? A, a brand? To purchase, yeah, well, that's not going to break the bank. Well, this one's a Hagloff. Um, th these things are all made in Scandinavia. They cost about 300 bucks. I recommend you get a 16-incher um, because any longer and uh, you'll break the bit off in the tree. Like, unfortunately, I stuck one in an oak tree too far and it uh, grabbed it and wouldn't let go. Um, but if anybody wants, wants to know where there is a bit, it's in this oak tree down on the Rogue River in Grants Pass. <laughs> <laughs> but you can actually tell the age of the tree from, uh, from this core sample. And uh, most of the core samples that I've taken have confirmed uh, uh, internal conditions that I suspected anyway. And the best thing about a core sampling tool is that you can show somebody else something that they won't understand but they'll believe it because it's 3D. It's an object. And uh, in the world of consulting when you're writing reports about hazard trees um, or risk of trees then um, uh, you, can, you can make your report stand head and shoulders among other reports by presenting a 3D object along with a packet of paper. And uh, if you have to go to court, if you have to deal with an insurance adjuster or uh, uh, the plaintiff's attorney who's suing your client or whoever, um, sometimes just the fact that you said that you took a core sample can make the other side give up because they realize how thorough you are. And with, uh, with consulting and hazard, it is a war of the words. You are actually uh, duking it out with verbs and nouns. So if you have tools like this core sampler, I mean this thing is this thing is 10 years old. I don't use it very often, and uh, when I have to show somebody else uh, the the justification for action to remove a tree, then uh, uh, it it's it's worth its weight in gold. A lot cheaper than a resistometer too. A resistograph is a device that uses an electric drill and it measures how much electricity it takes to drive the drill. So as the wood is tougher or weaker, depending on how mushy or sound it is, the amount of electric, electric current required to drive this drill bit into the tree is recorded on a piece of paper. So now that is technically an object because it's a long skinny piece of paper. Um, However, uh, resistograph uh, readings are um, just as difficult to interpret as a piece of uh, core sample out of a tree, but a lay person thinks that they can look at that core sample and, and understand it, whereas when, you, when a lay person looks at a resistograph uh, piece of paper, they have no idea what it means. They, they, they don't think that they understand that. People think they understand seeing the piece of wood, that, that, that little uh, pencil. Did you guys do lab tests on the wood to determine what the pathogen could be in a rot or, or, or similar? I have never done a lab test. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm more in the sniff test category. <laughs> you know, but guys, it, Michael's brought up a, a really good point too, and that's that, you know, most people 
they don't have a clue about trees. I mean, they're going to they're gonna count on you as professionals, you know, to be very straightforward, to be honest, you know, to be informative, to make them understand. You know, I, I, I don't know how many times, you know, I've heard people tell me things about trees that are so far off. And, you know, I mean, I'm right to, you know, well, I'm going to go up and I'm going to take some limbs off for you. And, um, so, you know, I'll rope those down. Oh, no, you can just cut them off. That's not going to hurt anything. You know, I mean, we're talking, you know, five, six, eight hundred pound limb. You know the shad or you know whatever gazebo and they 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 literally don't understand you know how heavy this stuff is so structural integrity and, and all that yeah they don't they don't get it so anything that you can do to help people um, understand and appreciate it is going to be in your favor dave mentioned the uh flexibility of this core sample if you have any money left over you can buy a thing that actually breaks these core samples it's uh <laughs> It, it measures the amount of energy it takes to fracture it. Trigometer? Yeah. So, so um, th th these, these are just ways that you can communicate with your clients. And you, uh, this is my little pitch, you are not in the tree business. You are in the bedside manner, hand-holding of uh, the owner of a tree business. These people are your clients. The tree is not your client. It doesn't matter what you do to the tree. The only thing that matters is that you communicate that there is value in the service that you provided to the tree for your client to feel better. You're in the business of making people feel better. And then also, by the way, before we get too far along here, I wanted to say that the visual tree assessment process also involves inspecting the site. And we know that this tree is on the edge of a clearing and there's water issues right here in this field because the, the, the water retention is completely different uh, back in the forest than it is out here in the grass. And, and because of the light, we know, uh, y you guys are all in tree business. You know that trees on the edge of a clearing are gonna lean towards the, the clearing. So, so, so um, do like a paramedic when he arrives at the site before you get out of your truck, see what the area looks like. When you get out of your truck, look closely at the area and look at the area uh, uh, outside the root zone and the root zone before you look at the tree. And if, um, again, when you're writing these reports, the one thing that you can say is that you did a systematic inspection. Not that you inspected it, but that you covered everything, including the area outside the tree and then the tree root zone and then the tree and its trunk branches, uh, 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 twigs, and leaves. So, so there, there's, your, there's your systematic inspection. So this is now wasted. Uh, a lot of times these things get filed away <laughs> it, it, because lawsuits take years to happen. So sometimes, uh, sometimes these are really valuable because they're the only record of a tree that used to be there and is no longer there. But you know, here, here you just look at this. Th this wood looks sound, okay? There, there's, there's really not much decay here. It's just dead wood. It's not in any kind of advanced uh, stage of decay. A little bit of the center did fall away, and, and we think that there's a, a, a little core that's maybe three inches in diameter that's dead in, inside the center of here. At least that's what I, I mean, saw. It's rotted. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. The decay has reached a far enough stage that it's actually broken down the wood. And and, and the nice thing that, that Dave has for you here today is that you can look at this tree now, and then you can swarm all over it like ants after it's down and confirm all of your suspicions. This is this is extremely valuable learning experience for everybody here because we get to view the entire process from from uh, visual tree assessment to post mortem. And guys, you know.